Hello and welcome to the virtual SOS. This week I've got two delightful women with me. So we've got Erica. Hello. Where are you from, darling? Um, Ken. Fantastic. And Monique. Hiya. From darling. I'm originally from the US, but I'm in North London at the moment. So, Erica, and you've got spots on the chin and the jawline. Yeah. You find it very hard to cover with makeup. So what I need to do is I need you to go really close up. Yeah. I like pick, I pick at them quite badly, which uh -huh. I know you shouldn't do. Where they are on your face reflects sometimes on what's going on. So when you have spots on your jawline, that can be about your gut health. And when you get them, because the other place you said you had them like the chin, it can be quite hormonal. So I don't know if you they sort of come up in hormonal moments or not. They probably do. If you've got them there and you don't thread, I'm going to say there's a higher chance that it's sort of about the gut. If your gut is healthy and if it's got good bacteria in it, as well as the bad, the flora and fauna are living in harmony in this kind of, you know, internal ecosystem, then bad, bad stuff that ends up here has less propensity to come. And then on your skin, how sensitive is your skin? Not massively sensitive, no. I would say I've got kind of, I get a really oily T-zone and that. So I kind of try yeah. to kind of go with like anything that's oil free. I'm going to actually suggest to you using an acid. And I don't know if you do. It will help. It will help to clean out the pores to balance your skin from being too oily. And I've got one here, which is, a clarifying peel you can do every day. So it's not that strong. It has in it AHAs, which alpha hydroxy acids, and it has in it BHAs. It has in it also, it's saying plus retinoid, but I looked on the back and it, that's like marketing speak. It's just throwing it in there because I saw what kind of retinoid it was. And I thought, oh, well, not really. Do you want to put on coverage, but don't know how, what happens? I put it on and then normally I kind of look at myself or catch myself in the mirror. And I think, oh my goodness, like I think I've made it worse. I'm going to ask you something else as well. Do you have a studio fix in that compact? No, so it's in the tube. What do you put it on with your fingers or a sponge? A or sponge. A... Okay. How often do you wash that sponge? I would say probably, I would like to think it's every three months. I'm going to go with six to nine months is probably more accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Being insane woman. I, I mean, I, I can tell you right now, if we're looking at why your skin, you're taking something onto an area to cover up. You know, we they look at what has the most bacteria and they have a toilet seat, a yeah. telephone. I would say your sponge sits between the telephone and the toilet seat. Awful. Burn it. Get rid of it. I'm so anti sponges because I think most people are just a bit lazy and they just think, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, your clean skin might have bacteria if you've broken out and it's like- So what would you say? You're gonna use this baby, the FF Rebalance. And the reason why is you're the skin I invented it for. And when I put it on, if I were to have a problem area, I just put it on like this gently. And because it's got such brilliant ingredients that are very good for the whole of your skin, like niacinamide, chlorella vulgaris to reduce shine, non-bioactives, which is a lovely sort of marine prebiotic, it's going to help your skin and it's going to cover and it's going to feel light. And you rub it in with those clean fingers. But remember the prebiotics. So darling, does that make sense to you? The sponge is gone. Time to say goodbye. Yes, I'm very happy. Wonderful. Thank you, Trini. Right. Okay, darling. Fantastic. Now, my love, Monique, you're talking about sebaceous cysts, all right? Now, sebaceous cysts, do you believe that they are acne forming sebaceous cysts or do you just believe they're from something else i think they're from something else to be fair you do need professional help when you have cystic spots because it you know a doctor will help you with it the best thing that can help scars is you're producing new collagen because collagen softens the scar so you can get new collagen forming by two different ways you can kind of attack it which is okay. what which is to do micro needling, little stuff on the scar, not on an active cystic acne. Then uh, what I sort of push into that are peptides. What I love about a peptide, you can layer them. Everybody nearly can use them, even sensitive skin. It's just a beautiful kind of gloopy stuff. For me, I always call them the very hard working ingredients. You don't see straight away what they're doing, but what they're going to do, sorry, stripling down, is they will send little messages 
into your skin and they sort of encourage the skin to make collagen. It's just a chain sort of reaction. I found with scarring, it's a really good solution. I'm also just going to go a bit left field. So speak to your nurse and doctor as well about, you know, you can do these sort of um, silicone scar patches, which you can put on. And that helps heal as well when you're in that early stage. I'm going to ask you a couple of things your dermatologist might not ask you. What shampoo do you use? I think Tresemade. Because I do know that there are some people who come to me and they have spots and they're washing their hair like this, okay, on their back in the shower. And they've got all the ingredients of the shampoo going down. Sometimes people get spots where it all drops here. And you're in the shower and you don't like wipe down above your bottom. Consider going to a shampoo, like something which is not cheap, which I'm using, which I love, because it has nothing in it that's kind of, I think, bad. It's called Hair Story. It just, it's like you're putting a cream on. So does that help you? Did you learn anything from each other? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, massively, actually. All right, girls, so nice to talk to you. You too. Thank you Thanks for your time, Trini. Bye. 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 So I hope you enjoyed the show. Unexpected things come up, but it always brings up my experience of talking with women for 20 years about their skin. So I'm just passing on to you the knowledge I have gained, but always ask your dermatologist or doctor if you're under any kind of medication before you should try anything. And tune in next week. Bye. <laughs>